238, uh, our weekly chat, uh, Rob Ford, say the blog.com and uh, columnist for Forum Communications. How was the uh, turkey day, buddy? Had a great turkey day. Yeah? Uh, yeah, had a lot of fun. Um, no problem finding a turkey? No problem finding a turkey <laughs> at all. Not amazing. Uh, um, although we um, we actually, because we, we order our groceries, like we order and pick them up at the store, because it's just honestly with kids and everything, not having to drag up to the grocery store. Yeah. It's just easier. And uh, we got we got downsized on our turkey a little bit, but we still had so much. We still have leftovers in the. You got your tree yet? Because that's the new scare now. Oh, uh, well, Christmas my trees. my daughter <laughs> my daughter turned twenty one and went with her mom to Las Vegas, so she wasn't here. Normally, we put up the tree right after Thanksgiving, and it's kind of a family thing. So we're waiting for her to get back. Yeah. But uh, yeah, my daughter texted me from Vegas. Uh, where she's with her mother celebrating her 21st birthday, doing all sorts of things her dad didn't really even want to hear about. So, <laughs> oh no, just hanging by the pool. I just, sure. yeah, yeah. yeah, no, they've like I just, I just don't, just don't get yeah. arrested, uh, <laughs> oh. kept home safe. But uh, otherwise, dad doesn't, dad doesn't need to hear what's, yeah. uh, what's happening. What stays in Vegas can stay in Vegas. You, you leave that in Vegas, honey. <laughs> That's exactly right. Hey, I see this. Uh... Uh, oh, I'm quite sure now you've heard the news. We'll get in that in a second. Uh, uh, Lincoln Elementary School here uh, uh, in uh, in Fargo, uh, a child brought a loaded gun to school and was uh, showing it off to his it's friends. Scary. That is some scary stuff that is right very there. Scary. So uh, I want to touch on that. But I want to touch on this uh, uh, the Axe Man. Folks, remember the guy that uh, went after uh, Senator Hovind's office in downtown Fargo with the axe, thought it was funny, and yeah. I believe the guy, doesn't this guy, uh, he describes himself as like 100% Antifa oh, uh, yeah. in his social media posting. Yep. Yeah. Um, so he's, uh, well, you go ahead and tell the story. It seems like he's he's been back. Yeah. So Didn't really learn a lesson? I don't I don't think so. Since his, um, since his conviction, and he ended up getting, I mean, he... he demolished that door of Senator Hovind's office. Scary. If you've seen the video, I, oh, yeah. I wrote, wrote about it today. There's a video at inform.com if you want to check it out. Um, he, I mean, he, all he got was prob- pro- probation and like, a, I think it was like a 2500 somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, ballpark like $2,500. Just under $2,800 fine, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of a slap on the wrist for, for something, uh, what I took to be very serious. Since then, uh, he's been bragging on, on Facebook about how the FBI gave his axe back. Uh, he was posting under a pseudonym called Paul Dunyon, which I'm assuming is some sort of a Paul reference Bunyan, to Paul yeah. Bunyan and the axe yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, he has, uh, yeah, described himself as 100% Antifa, completely unrepentant, um, and still friends with a bunch of which with a bunch of Democrat high profile Democrats on Facebook. Um, so I just just kind of amazing. We're, we're having this this what I think is a very important discussion about extremism in politics and the right and the left have problems with this and lately we've been talking a lot about january 6th and yeah. what happened and rightfully so but the I thing is is there's haven't. there's another side of this where i mean we've had violent pipeline protests mm-hmm. we've had violent uh, black lives matter protests we have somebody like this this thomas starks fella who attacked senator hoven's office and then got money for his legal defense That's from right. the chairman of the North Dakota That's Democratic right. Party at the time, Kylie Overson, from Ellen Chafee, who was a past uh, lieutenant governor candidate for the lieutenant for, for the uh, North Dakota Democratic Party, also from uh, Ellie Chafee, who is a uh, or excuse me, Ellie uh, Shockley, who is a Bismarck Tribune columnist and also on the executive committee of the North Dakota Democratic Party. Um, it's just kind of amazing to me that they supported this guy who committed a violent well, attack it's, against it's, a U.S. senator. It's do as, I, do, do as I say, not as I do. It's okay for, for one side to do it, but not the other side. And, and that's that, and that's that's one of the big problems with politics. One side says you can't do this oh, while well, they go ahead and do it. It's vice versa. It's ridiculous. And that's the point I'm trying to make. This stuff's not going to – because every time – I'll tell you, even over the holiday, I was having a discussion with a mm-hmm. relative who's a, a left of – 
left of center what are person. You doing? And we were we were talking. Well, I don't mind. Listen, I do politics <laughs> for a living, so I talk I about it all the time. I it know. doesn't bother me. And it was a, it was a good conversation overall. And the thing was, is he was talking about how much he's liked a lot of my stuff. I've been very critical of Donald Trump and a lot of the Republicans who I feel are, are way too enamored with him. Um, he liked a lot of those columns, right? Mm-hmm. But then when I started talking about Democrats, oh. immediately starts getting defensive. Like, oh, well, they're not really that bad. They're not oh. really doing the same thing. Yes, they are. Look what's happening to the, the, the cities that are run by, by, by the Dems. Look at what's uh, happening. The, 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 yes, I'm calling yeah. it looting. Yeah. It is looting. Oh, we had it happen in the cities over yeah. the weekend. Yeah. Not, not even in me. I think it was a couple suburbs. It you was uh, Richfield and no. uh, somewhere... There's, there's been yeah, several places in California. I don't know oh, what. Yeah. So it was somewhere in the Twin Cities area, I think. Security in guard got killed over the weekend protecting a, a, TV, a TV news, news crew. crew. I was yeah. at the Home Depot Just in California. In Colma, California. So there's, yeah. well, the, I, and that's really interesting because we have this notion about the law in, in America that, that people don't commit crimes because of the law. And that's that's really not how it works. You and I don't commit crimes because we're not criminals, right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't need a law to tell me not to steal my neighbor's draw, car yeah, or not to exactly. m- kill murder somebody in the street. I don't do those things because I consider them to be immoral and unethical. Um, and so the law follows our behavior. Our behavior doesn't necessarily follow the law. Um, so we, we have this notion that, that well, well, we'll make laws and everybody will buy the law and, and the law is why people do things. And that's not really true. We rely on people choosing to behave a certain way. And so the problem is, is that when large groups of people choose to just abandon our notions about violence or in, in the cases where people are mobbing these stores and doing these smash and grabs where dozens of people just pile in and grab whatever they can grab, um, what ha- what's happening is large groups of people are just abandoning their commitment to our society's notions about things like violence or things like private property and theft. No. And, and we don't have a very good way to deal with that. Well, we, we don't. don't. We don't. You're right. We don't. And 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 I don't think you're going to see this stop anytime soon. I mean, you're right. Think like you're you're, you're at a Best Buy uh, or whatever store you want to use as an example, and you got you know 50, 80 people coming in there. What are you going to do? Yeah. What, 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 and the problem for law enforcement is law enforcement doesn't know where this is going to happen, and even if they did. You know how many officers you're going to have to be at that place, and that takes them off the street? And other, th- this is a scary thing because you're right, Rob. How do you stop this? And uh, if you think it's going to stop it, uh, you know, they already got rid of uh, three CVSs in one California city. Well, they will Walgreens, continue, is, Walgreens right. is closing left and right they out there. Now con- you got Best Buy in yep. the cities. It's well, happening. And, 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 and but the, I mean, that becomes such a terrible thing because, I mean, some of these some of these neighborhoods where it's happening – or maybe not real great neighborhoods. And it's it's tough to attract jobs and opportunities right. there to begin with. So these businesses stop leaving, jobs stop stop living. That's right. And then the people who live there and who pay the property taxes and everything, they start leaving. See, and then people, what's left behind? These people are they're too stupid to realize what they're doing to and chances are they probably don't even live in the neighborhoods that they're looting. But but in some cases they do look what you're doing to your your neighborhood your community all you're doing is hurting it beyond yeah. all the theft and, and look they're doing this for easy money because they're taking this merchandise and then it's almost like there's a cartel out there that's buying this stuff at cut rate prices uh paying them almost nothing and well because it on the, the internet, internet the internet's an easy right. fence the that's internet's right. an easy fence because you buy something right. used on eBay do you question it no, no I mean most people don't and I don't blame them I mean you you just assume the person you're selling it from it was theirs and they're selling it to you like you don't assume that it was stolen so i mean it's really hard for law enforcement to monitor the internet it's such a ready fence for them but but i would argue that this this phenomena goes even further where again people just abandon certain norms we're seeing it in politics where neither side wants to let the other side govern Mm -mm. so they come in they win an election and then it's all just conspiracy theories they didn't really win the election they're illegitimate and our job is to stop them and doing whatever it is they're doing our government was not intended to function that way um all the people who just like i don't like these laws or whatever uh, i'm just going to ignore them i'm going to do whatever i want the more we do that the more we abandon these institutions i think america has been so safe and so prosperous for so long we have forgotten that that what we enjoy within the 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 context of human history is not the norm 
Um, well, well, well hold, hold, hold on. Here's, here's part of the problem, too, is, is, is we have these groups out there now that, that don't believe in incarceration, don't believe people should have to pay bail to get out of jail. And we have prosecutors and judges that are giving ridiculous low sentences or bails yeah we've had, but then, we've had crimes recently even locally where you go why would this why is this person even on the street yeah the waukesha yeah. uh waukesha uh, the, 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 the i mean the, yeah, but the, then the you, jupiter pulse yes. and the but, shooting at the where else right. here a couple uh, weeks or a week or so yeah. but then you go you go to the other side of the spectrum and now you look at our ridiculous incarceration rates where well, we have too. huge you know, number of people in, in prison that... and that's causing huge amounts of money we're putting people in prison for maybe things they don't really like like mm -hmm. we're putting people in, like here in north dakota there was just an excellent series in the forum from patrick springer and one of the things that came out in north dakota we're using the jails as de facto mental health care well, facilities. Well, that's funny you bring that up because Sheriff uh, Jesse, Cass County Sheriff Jesse Johnner is going to be in the studio at 305. I suspect he's got a lot this. to say about that. That's right? what he's coming yeah. in for. He's like, Jay, you cannot believe how bad this is getting one of our one of our best sheriffs in the state he is mm -hmm. great on this stuff i think yep. he gets it and, and i i can't imagine being in that position in law enforcement and looking at somebody and, and saying listen putting this person in jail is not or, or prison is not the right move but we don't have anything else we could do with them well, right because they're a danger to themselves they're a danger to others what they need is treatment what they well, need is help but the only tool we have is we're going to stick them in jail and then they get out, the, you know, 60 days, night, whatever the incarceration is, they're out. They've got n n no help. They, you know, they're not taking their medications. And and a majority of the time when they reoffend, the crimes continue to get worse and worse. And, and it is frustrating for law enforcement because they're arresting the same people over and over. What the jailers are having to deal with when it comes to folks that have severe mental health problems, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable what is going on with the jailers. And you've got, you've also got the people that don't, I mean, honestly, who wants that job? I mean, yeah. kudos to you if you take that job, but you you are dealing with, with some really, really I have mentally a, ill people. I have a, I have a nephew who's in corrections, um, but it's, uh, listen, it's, it's a tough thing all, all the way around, but I, we, we kind of veered off into uh in a criminal justice yeah. reform, which which I think we've we've done a lot of good things, but I, we I, what I really want to focus on is what to do with people after they've served their sentence, so that they can re-enter. Like people who have been convicted, mm -hmm. they've served out their sentence, and now they need to re-enter society. I think we can help those people more. Well, you um, have you have like you have the uh, the, the uh, F five project, project Adam Martin. Stuff. I think there's more we could do. You, well, there is. There's a lot more that can be Absolutely. done, and that's what the sheriff is going to. Uh, but is going to address. But but my larger point is is we are losing. I, I don't know what you want to call it, like like the the social contract or or whatever. Um, this this idea that like if you're going to participate in a society, you have to respect some of the rules, right? Respect like, is gone though. It, it, it is gone. it is gone, and it's across the spectrum. I mean, it's it's everywhere. It's people, you know, like the mask debate. And I don't, I really don't want to litigate masks anymore. No, Everybody's no. sick and tired of it. But no. it's just it's just stuff like that where, I, I a healthy debate is one thing, but like just widespread you know f you and i'm gonna do whatever i want that attitude is permeating everything but, but, Jay, but the and it's attitude tearing is, I, our society apart the attitude of i can do whatever i want is coming from people that are that are seeing that there's no consequences to actions or if there are consequences those consequences are very right but how minimal. do you how do you bring consequences when it's just widespread. Look. And listen, listen, one, one of the debate, one of the problems I've had with, with both vaccine mandates and mask mandates, just as one example, is that you the government shouldn't issue policies that people aren't likely to follow, right? Like if we don't That's if right. we don't have the consensus behind these things, a, a mandate's not gonna fix it. It's just gonna make it worse. So I never sure. liked those things. But my problem is is that just just this I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do and to hell with everybody else. Left and right, like that's not like it's it's the same thing. It's the same attitude. The pipeline protesters. You have a pipeline, and it's been scrutinized by federal regulators yeah. and state regulators. It's been litigated before the courts. Um, every they got their permits, they could build the pipeline. And so, what are we gonna? We're gonna like go throw our bodies in the trench so that they can't build the pipeline. That is not respect for the rule of law. That's but, not how it's supposed to work. But but to have respect 
for the rule of law, you have to send a message. And that message is, you go, let's let's use this looting that's, that's happening right now. And it's, it's getting closer and closer to, to, to home. You have this looting going on. You catch some of these people and you throw the book at them. There's no, okay, yeah. you know what? Um, you know, and, when, and when you change laws like California did, what is it, uh, 900 and some dollars? 1000 bucks. 1000 bucks or less than it's not. Yeah. You know, we're not even going to really come after you. I mean, all that, all, all you did there was just open the door for what we are seeing happening. And until you start letting people know that, you know what, the hammer's coming down and we are not going to put up with this. You went in and you looted a Best Buy store. Um, guess what? You're going to go sit your butt in jail for a couple years. Hey, maybe that that's the message that has to not. Here's a slap on the wrist. We're not even going to come after you. When you send that message, just like when yeah. you go and burn cities down, hey, or, or 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 if you go and you assault a a retail store worker because they tell you to put a mask on, yeah, I, exactly. I mean, stuff like that. I mean, across the board. But the thing is, is if, 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 if but the thing is, is that if, if society at large, if just just millions and millions of people decide to start behaving that way, we don't have enough cops we to don't. do what you're talking about. We yet. don't. And well, some we... at some point, it's got to be society saying we can't behave this way. We cannot well, behave this way. And, and and I think I I think we're a far uh, as sad as this is, I think we're a long ways away from the right society. When I say right, I don't mean right politically, I mean the right people in society to start condemning this stuff. Where the hell? Where the hell? Wait, boy, LeBron James James wants to go out and rip out a seventeen year old who did nothing wrong but defend himself. Yeah. Okay, and maybe I missed it. And you have these actors that wanted to go out and rip on President Trump and, and, and everything else. And, oh, he's a racist. He's this. Okay? Where are these same people that supposedly have all this this pull and they can change people's minds? I, which I don't believe they can. But where are they when this stuff happens? Have you seen LeBron James or yeah. or these actors or actresses? Have yeah. any of them condemned this this looting? If they have, my, my right. bad. I right. But Not I haven't one. seen it. And on, I haven't seen it. And on the other side of that, look at all the Republicans who are busy making excuses for the January 6th riot. That well, was disgusting. Well, it was repugnant. But a lot of them are sitting on their hands or are too afraid to, to, to say anything bad about Donald Trump or his movement because they're afraid of the political ramifications. So, I mean, it, it cuts both ways. It's, it's people. I mean, it's exactly the point that I'm trying to make about the North Dakota Democrats. They are more than happy to talk about the January 6th rioters and oh, all, yeah. all, all the Republican advisors they see out there. But here but, they had their, their own chairwoman at the time is donating money to a guy who took an axe to Senator Hovind's office. And and this guy goes on and puts up a fake or, a, you know, a, a Fugazi profile, a, yeah. a profile, and they're all liking it. Right. Yeah. They're all like, you think you, you, you think that. You're sending a, the right message. You're right. Uh, they sit there and condemn January 6th and President Trump. And but yet they turn around and are back in a guy that is, is, is attacking a federal official's office. Yeah. So, so just, that, it's, that's, it's that's the thing. We got to be concerned because I'm seeing people on Facebook. I know you are too, Jay, who, who are very, very quick to talk about Antifa and everything else. And rightfully so. Like, I'm, I'm not saying that that criticism is wrong. But boy, they start singing a different tune if you start talking about some of these right wing uh, QAnon weirdos yep. or whatever else. Um, Speedo, did you see those QAnon people who are at Dealey Plaza down in Dallas? No, I, I, I've never really followed. I, I just finally There's found out what QAnon was this week, and I asked. Alex, I said, "So, Alex, because I just I stay yeah. away from that stuff." Yeah. I just like Alex. So, so, honey, explain me what, what is this QAnon stuff? Yeah. So, so these people down they're waiting in Dealey Plaza because they think JFK Jr. Oh, who who okay, died? Yeah, who died yeah, like yeah. fifteen or however long ago it was? Quite a while ago now. Um, died in a plane crash. They think he's not really dead, and that he's going to appear in Dealey Plaza. And and for some reason, even assuming that he's he's not, and he's he obviously he's he's dead. I mean, terrible well, tragedy. Yes, he's but dead. he's dead. Um, but if for some reason, let's just suppose for a minute that he's not, and he appears. They also think that he has the authority to somehow reinstate Donald Trump as president of the United States. Um, I'm getting emails. Uh, January 6th, Jay was not a riot. The guy's got stuff. Look, I am not going to discuss January 6th. I wasn't there. Uh, yeah, I saw it on TV. Uh, I, I know that uh, Alex, uh, she was there for the morning show um, from from what she told me. Although, she, thank God she didn't go to the Capitol. She never planned on it. She's like, yep. I, I got out of there. I'm like, thank God, because we'd still be dealing with that. 
I, I, I don't even go down that road because I, I don't know. I wasn't there. The, the, that, that thing's never going to go away. The, the, the Democrats are going to sit there and, and they're going to ride that horse forever. And as long as they do that, you know that's what, you know what helped them so that they wouldn't be able to ride that horse? If Republicans took some responsibility for it. That's, well, who's, who takes responsibility? How about for Donald it? Trump? How about all the people around Donald Trump? How about Steve Bannon? How about those so do people? Do you think who, Donald Trump told those people go in there and trash the the, the Capitol? We have we have we have reports where organ, organizers of the rally bought burner phones so that they could communicate with Donald Trump Jr. Uh, well, if that comes out, then yeah, that's a problem. If if, if it comes out again, I, I was there. Well, I stayed away from that whole nightmare. I I want. I don't think we can get Jay. If, if if people like you and I want to be taken seriously when we're talking about democratic violence and and them, you know, uh, uh, pandering to the extremes, then we have to be willing to talk about January sixth. I just I, I just. All, all, all this violence needs to stop. Let's just, it does. Th- that's where I'm at with it. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle that. you're from. It's all got to stop. I agree with that. Uh, 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 enough of this. And I don't know what it's going to take to get it to stop. I, th- I think a lot of it starts with our politicians and our media. They have fueled this fire, and they continue to fuel it. Yeah. Uh, so they hold a lot of responsibility. Well, they do. There's Believe me, there's plenty of blame to go around. Oh, yeah. All right, buddy. What are you working on? Anything uh, you want to plug? Uh, boy, nothing I'm ready to talk about right now. I think okay. I think we might be talking about some of the school board stuff uh, on the next podcast coming up on Wednesday. That might be pretty interesting, but I'm still working on booking some guests. All right, brother. All right. Uh, Rob Boards, heavyblog.com. Call him as Forum Communications. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk next uh, Monday. Thanks, Jay. All right. Take a break. When we come back, Cass County Sheriff Jesse Johnner, I think I saw the... They're here. Uh, the head yeah. of the uh, Brotherhood of the Pointy Star, <laughs> or badge, or whatever you call it. I saw him here. Uh, he's gonna uh, he's gonna join us next and talk about you know just how bad this mental health I- issue is in our jails, yeah, and uh, what he'd like to see done. If if it, w- what can be done. All right, uh, you can jump in any time of the conversation. Two nine three nine thousand toll free one eight 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 nine seven zero nine three two nine. Jay Thomas, show.